Welcome back, folks, to my channel, Clunkers and Classics. I'm going to go over a couple of clunkers I just got in. Uh, I just got this one in yesterday from a friend of mine who's kind of a scrapper. He takes cars, buys them cheap, and either takes does what I do, take the catalytic converters off, which is worth the most, and then he, he pretty much hauls them straight to the uh, crusher, to the scales. And uh, as you can see, he cut the cat off on this one. Well, he called me up, and he knows that I like Jeeps. So uh, he wanted like 400 for it. And I says, well, let's, you know, because he's old, the cats are worth a couple of hundred. And I said, well, take the cats off, and I'll give you 200 So he did, and brought it to me, because he just lives down the road. So, uh... I got it for 200 bucks and delivered, so I didn't even have to put gas in my truck and go pick it up and all that, and he delivered it. Just kind of sitting here, I need to push it back into a spot. So I'll go over it, I got it for 200 and it's worth, it's worth 200 over the scales. But he would have to drive about 15 miles to it, so he saved himself 15 miles of driving there and back. And... Uh, <coughs> No, he claims it's been sitting up for about five years, but it did run. It is a 5.2 liter 318. It's a 96 Grand Cherokee. With the, uh, if you can see here, it got chewed up by rats. He said he put a battery in it and couldn't uh, uh, get it started. Just cranked over, but wouldn't start. People he got it from claim that it ran when parked uh, I don't know I don't know exactly why they parked it but something's probably got to be wrong with it so I don't know if I'm gonna try to uh, uh, get them wires fixed and try to get it started or not I probably will later on not anytime soon okay because uh, that motor's worth some money if it's uh, if it runs good. It's got a different colored door on it. Uh, they lost the title on it, so it's kind of hard to sell it whole without a title. Although the um, person claimed he could get a title, but heard that story many a times. Who knows? Uh, it's got the electronic deal on it, so I don't know how many miles are on it without putting a battery in it. It is four-wheel drive, called the uh, Quadra Track. It's, yeah, full-time four-wheel drive, four-wheel high and low. Uh, radio's missing, don't know what that window's out of. Lots of trash in it. So we'll just go over it real quick. Uh, don't know how good the tires are, but it's got a set of matching rims. Looks like it's originally from Missouri. So lots of good parts, especially uh, since it's four-wheel drive. Interior just needs to be really cleaned up. I got some. I don't know what that tire's from. Uh, so I'm just gonna take some pictures of it and advertise it for parts. But anyway, with this car, I paid 200. It's worth 200 over the scales, so I'm dead even. Anything I sell off this is pure profit. And I sell a lot of this little stuff. Even if this engine is no good, the alternator's 50, air, AC compressor's 50, power steering pump usually 30, 40 bucks. Uh, people buy throttle bodies, all kinds of stuff. So this is a big, big money maker here. I'll probably sell. It'll take a while because I'm out. I'm not in a big city or nothing. So uh, 
Uh, it takes a while to part these things out. A couple hundred bucks for the rims and tires. Uh, people come by and buy, you know, door handles and cladding and bumpers and oh, hatchbacks, all kinds of stuff. So I'll probably make a thousand bucks or so off of this thing over time. Okay, so the second clunker I got in is this 2001 Mustang. Uh, this was a customer of mine that just lived down the road. He backed into something and uh, busted his taillights. He came over and bought some taillights from me. Uh, then he come back, he was gonna fix it up. I mean, this thing is beat. Every panel on it's just beat. Uh, he bought these headlights from me because his front end was all messed up. He's got an older bumper cover. He doesn't even have the headlights mounted in or nothing. So he bought a few little miscellaneous parts off me over a couple of weeks. And then he just calls me up and says, uh, hey, uh, can you buy my car from me? He goes, I started up this morning and the motor is all knocking and blue. So uh, he wanted 300 for it. I said, well, does it have the catalytic converters on it? Because there's supposed to be four of them on there and they're worth uh, $100 each. So it's $400 in cats. So he says, oh, uh, we, we cut two of them off, straight piped it because they were clogged, but there's two on there. So I said, well, I said, best, best I can do is 200 bucks. So he brought it to me. He got a, uh, a buddy with a truck and they used a chain and they towed it over here. So it's another one that I didn't have to go pick up, load up on my trailer and waste my gas. So I give him 200 for it and uh, it's got two converters on it and he said they were full so that's 200 bucks so another one um break well i'm actually up 200 because the cars were 200 over the scales so i'm up 200 right off the bat don't know what all good he said the transmission's really good on it so i could probably sell it he took a stereo out uh speakers but it's just, uh, it's rough, rough. Uh, the rims are good. I've sold a set of these rims for 300 before. And that's why another reason I told them I couldn't give them 300 because of this rim. It's a big old chunk missing. And a big bent there. I said, listen, nobody's going to buy three rims. I said, the rims aren't worth shit to me. So, and they're 17s, but I don't know, uh, somebody may buy them or may just buy two or three or one, it don't matter. So this is another one we just dropped, he just dropped it off right here. And uh, I'm gonna find a spot for it. It's probably gonna go back, back up here with a couple more Mustangs. So, yeah, I got all the, I got stories from all these cars here but I'm not gonna go over every one of them. I'm just gonna start these videos of the ones that are just coming in, uh, fresh ones coming in, and I'll, uh, I'll make videos of what I got in. So these are the clunkers. Uh, also wanted to go over, uh, I watched some videos. I'm not gonna mention any names, but there are, guys on there that uh, you probably seen them they oh yeah you can buy these cars at auctions and make a bunch of money and there's one guy on there that does that but he buys cars but he loses his ass on every one of them and he buys cheap ones he thinks you know 400 bucks or 700 bucks at the auction well here's what I'll say about that for now First off, he's paying a couple hundred bucks for auction fees. Then he's towing it home. He pays, you know, $100 to have it towed home. Uh, when you buy cars at auctions, you uh, have to put it in your name. So you got to do the title, title work, uh, get it put in your name, pay for new tags, blah, 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 but, uh, tax, title, license, all that. Uh, anytime you buy a car at an auction, you have to pay that. 
see like this car here these two cars here I just showed you I don't have to do that especially since I'm parting them out they don't need to be in my name right and even if you bought one at an auction which most the ones he buys or people buy uh, they're junk they're not worth fixing up they're not worth putting money into and they got a bad transmission or they're rusted out or they're just junk so if if you buy one from an auction for 400 plus title fees and auction fees and titles and all that you know you got over a grand in it and then come to find out it's junk and it ain't worth fixing because it's got a bad transmission or it's you know the motor's knocking or something like that then you just junk it or part it out well you wasted all that money tagging it and putting it in your name when you didn't have to so it's very very hit and miss buying uh cars at auction so i wouldn't recommend it for a beginner uh i've even seen i won't mention any names again another experienced guy owns a car lot and he goes to those dealer auctions and buys cars and he's he acts like he's all coked up and going a mile a minute and uh uh he just misses stuff he said he's just got a few seconds to look at each car as it rolls in onto the floor. And he's missing cars that have different color fenders on them and uh, crap like that. And they'll, they'll drive into the auction and then they'll sputter going out. So they got bad motors or bad transmissions. Then he buys high dollar ones. Like uh, $18,000 Silverados that he claims he can uh, uh, sell on a website or uh, put through another auction and make a thousand dollars on it. And he does that all the time. You know, what, what, <laughs> you spend $17,000 to make $1,000 profit and you take all the risk. I mean, these cars are not at the auction because they're in great shape they're at the auction because there's something wrong with them and especially when you get to spend that much money you spend seventeen eighteen thousand dollars on a on a truck and the transmission shot or it's been wrecked or it's full of bondo or you know who knows it's just been rigged up to pass the auction block you could end up spending thousands and thousands of dollars fixing that thing up to resell it and he's reselling them to make one thousand dollars well if he has to spend five grand on a repair on one of them he's got to sell five more <laughs> do five more good deals to pay for the bad deal just to break even so it's just a, a really messed up uh, system I don't recommend it for any of you beginners uh, I would recommend it if you years ago I used to specialize in 93 to 02 Camaros like these here when I lived in the Dallas area and I could do that because I got you know five million people in Dallas Fort Worth area I could find them easy fix them up and uh, sell them easy or part them out I would part out a car like this and a matter of a week every piece would be gone on it <laughs> so if you're specializing something whatever it is Camaros or Mustangs or whatever yeah you can go to the auctions and you, you take your take your risks but you uh, you load up your lot or your shop or whatever with you know 10 or 15 of them and you, you take your chances you can fix up say you buy 10 and you can fix up seven of them and use the other three for parts well that's fine uh, overall you're gonna make a killing if you're buying one at a time and hoping for the best, oh, I'll buy this uh, this Mustang at the auction, and uh, you'll lose your ass trying to buy one at a time. I, I mean, I could go on for hours about uh, what what to do and and uh, stuff like that, but I guess I'll just do a little commentary on each video that I go in. So basically, what I'm saying is. Uh, for me at this particular time this is the best way to buy cars I, I run an ad from time to time I don't have an ad now because I get way too busy and I got my own cars to work on 
but uh, when I, I just run an ad saying I uh, will buy junk, wrecked, abandoned, whatever type vehicles, and we'll pay a hundred dollars and up. And some of them I get for a hundred, some I get for free, some of them I had to pay two hundred. Uh, Okay, I got a customer pulling up. I'll end this video for now, and we'll talk with you later. Okay, my customer left. He just come over to take off some leaf springs for a Dodge pickup. Uh, where was I at? Uh, so what I do is I just buy these cars uh, for not much more than scrap value. Okay. A couple hundred bucks, you know, like I said, this is worth uh, two hundred dollars over the scales But you get them with the cats on them, you know, my buddy cut the one off on on this one But uh, if you got this one for two hundred He said he sold the cat for three hundred So boom you're up a hundred. It's worth two hundred over uh, uh, over the scales So boom you're up three hundred right away if you wanted to turn it turn it and burn it quick Right, you're up 300 bucks. You spent 200, you make 300. That's over 100, 150 percent of your money immediately. Okay, you can do that, uh, but I don't scrap them. I haven't scrapped any cars yet. As you can see, my lot is just filled because I, I I make my money back on the cats. Okay. But I keep them because of these parts. You know, people come over, doesn't matter, 25 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks for some parts. They come over, pull them off, and, you know, see, see right here? Can you see a 97 Chevy pickup? Look real close. There isn't one. You know why? Oh, this is what I got left of it. See them wheel wells? That's all I got left out of a whole 97 Chevy pickup, short bed. I sold the engine, transmission, uh, first, body parts, bumpers, then I sold the bed, then a guy from Minnesota came down, bought the cab, I had the frame left, and a guy wanting the whole frame. Uh, oh, then I sold the rear end separately. I sold every part on that truck except for them wheel wells. And I probably made, I don't know, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars, and I bought the truck for like a hundred and fifty, I believe. Had a bad uh, head gasket. So the sky's the limit when you buy these cars. You can scrap them immediately, cut the cats off, and double your money, or triple your money, or you can keep them around, part them out, and make, you know, ten, fifteen times your money. Uh, what I do on some of these. I get the mailman. What I do on some of these, like so, so let's say this Jeep here, uh, they lost the title, could probably get one, but it's not worth the hassle or the money trying to get a title. But if I had this one with the title and it ran just like it sits, just wash it, probably fifteen hundred bucks, twelve fifteen hundred. It had minor problems with it. Uh, what a lot of a lot of times I do is this one say it's not running just the way it sits now without doing anything Sometimes I'll put it up for about six or seven hundred dollars and somebody will buy it just for parts to fix up theirs So if I sold it for six hundred that's triple my money right off the bat So I could do that Sometimes I do that sometimes I'll fix them up uh, Sometimes I'll just sell them as is uh, but anyway, you can't lose. It's you, you. You cannot lose buying these cars for 100, 200 bucks. Okay. So that's a lot better deal than uh, buying them from the auction. And all you got to do is run an ad, put it in Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Years ago, I had the green sheet and a thrifty nickel. I used to place ads in there for free. And. Uh, you just buy them and if you don't have the room so you bought this thing you decided it ain't worth a shit take the wheels off a couple hundred bucks or whatever get some good parts and then scrap it then you got room for another one so you don't you don't need a big lot to do it to triple double triple quadruple your money you don't even you don't even need a big 
just a three car two car driveway you could do it do them one at a time every day pick one up strip some good parts you need if it ain't worth the damn junk it go on to the next one now what happens it's it's gambling because you never know what kind of car's coming in you could get a junker like this where every panel is beat to hell on it or you could get a nice one you know i i went over this car on my on my property uh tour of my property video but i'll go over it again here real quick this lady calls me up and says that uh her bro her uh, husband's brother moved to japan four years ago parked his car in the driveway and just called her four years later and said listen i'm staying in japan you can do what you want to this with with this car and this was on my birthday exactly one year ago last april uh so I told her, I said, well, how much do you want for it? She goes, oh, I don't want anything for it. I just want it out of my driveway. I said, well, I'll be right over. There's a 2013 Ford Fusion. Had 73,000 miles on it. Uh, it'd been sitting for four years, but I'll tell you, the gas wasn't bad in it or nothing. I, I put five gallons of good gas in it and a new battery. Uh, cleared out all the rat's nests under the hood and everything and had a couple of wires chewed up, fixed that. She started right up. Uh, the only thing I'd done to it was uh, was uh, put new tires on it. And hell, I just drove it to Florida a little while ago. So that's what I'm saying. You can buy these, put the ad out, and people will call you up and give you give you stuff. I got this car for free. You know, and I've been driving it for a year. Put probably eight thousand miles on it. Not a lot, but hell, I drove it to Florida. So, you can come across a junker that ain't worth a damn, but you'll break even, or you'll make a couple of hundred cutting the cat off, or you get a free car. I mean, that, that Fusion is worth, uh, I don't know, 6500 bucks. And the other thing to mention on those uh, auction cars is most of them are all rebuilt titles. They're worth 20 30% less than the retail. So you're losing right there, too. You get it, you got a car you buy from an auction, you fix it all up, thinking it's worth ten grand. No, it's only worth seven grand because it's got a rebuilt title. So you're losing three grand right off the bat and something like that. And if you watch these big guys on YouTube, won't really mention too many names, they're about all the same. One of them is a Goon Squad, the two young brothers there, and I was watching their series. It was kind of neat. They're fixing up a, a Lamborghini uh, Hur Huracan, whatever, however you pronounce it. And then I watched their last video of it where they went over how much they spent on it. And they broke even. 150 grand, I think, is what it's worth. And they had about 148,000 in it. <laughs> and now it's got a rebuilt title, so it's really not worth whatever price they give, 150 or something probably worth 30% less so they did all that work for what for even break even just you know and what are they teaching you they're teaching you to buy a car spend all that time fixing it up and not make no money on it just like these most of the people on YouTube it, it's crazy you know the like right now the goon squad they're fixing up a 2019 Ford Raptor and they're going, and I can tell what's going to happen. I don't know. They're only on episode, a couple episodes into it. But uh, they're buying all the, it's all wrecked down the side and the cab. And the, and they're buying all their parts brand new from Ford. $2,000 for a bedside, $1,000 for a door, 2000 for this. And I'm like, yeah, I hope they do a video at the end. And... Uh, and uh, explain how much money they put into that because that's that's real you cannot buy a car from an auction and buy all the parts to fix it from the dealer you will lose your ass big time so they're not teaching you nothing now they may teach you some stuff how to repair something or you can see a wrecked car going back to to looking good but money wise no they're not teaching you how to make money like most of them guys on YouTube, they lose their ass 
whether they tell you or not, they lose their ass every time on it. And then one guy on there, he, he tries, he admits it all. He admits he loses money on every car, but then he tries to explain it away by saying, well, well I make this much money on YouTube, and therefore these videos of this car made uh, this much money, so uh, I'm ahead. Well, no, you're not ahead. You sold the cars at a big loss. Doesn't matter about the YouTube money, you money get from YouTube. So, because 99% of you guys watching this videos aren't making, you know, all that money on YouTube. You're, you're, you're watching them to learn how to buy cars at an auction, fix them up and make money. And he's not teaching you that. Even though that's what his channel is supposed to be about, that's not what he's teaching you. If you did everything he done, you'd lose your ass. <coughs> Like I said, I could uh, I could ramble on for hours about uh, all that stuff, but maybe I'll make a devoted video to that <coughs> subject, or I'll just add a little commentary like this into into cars. So uh, mainly, this video is about these two vehicles I just got in, and I'm gonna be doing that from now on. Whenever I get a couple of cars in, I'll go over them, and uh, these two are pretty much junkers, clunkers. Uh, we will be getting some good ones like that fusion uh, and some in between I mean I bought one car a little while ago and it was from a preacher it was a 2005 Maxima nice car sitting on his front yard for four years because of a broken radiator and it was just full of black tree crap and everything else and uh, took it home I had a helper working for me and uh, Put in a radiator that I had, battery, and the thing fired right up, even on the old uh, four-year-old gas, run great. And power washed the hell out of it. And I was just gonna sell it. Originally, it looked so bad that I thought it'd be worth about 1,500. I, I, I give the guy, uh, I give the guy two, no, I give him 150 bucks, is what I paid for the car with a title. Uh, I thought it'd be a $1,500 car, and I cleaned that thing up, beautiful leather interior, cleaned that up, power washed it, the paint was just beautiful. And uh, I thought, you know what, this car's worth way more than $1,500, uh, hell with it, I'm going for $35. No, I ended up, the windshield had a crack in it, and I, I spent 100 bucks on a windshield, and I put a windshield in it, and... Uh, that thing was just beautiful. I took it for a ride. That thing just rode like a Cadillac. So I put it up for 3500 A guy called me within an hour, offered me thirty-two. I says, done. Take it. So I went from 100 I, I had a $150 car with a used radiator I had and a $100 windshield. Uh, you know, I had like 300 bucks in it, if that. And I sold it for 3200 within like a couple of days. That's a normal average car that I get in, one like that. Exceptional one would be the Fusion. The one on the lower totem pole would be this Mustang or this Jeep. <coughs> that are pro probably non-runners and, uh, and I find everything all in between. So it's kind of like Christmas. Every time someone calls you up, it's like a Christmas present. You don't know what you're gonna get. You could get a, but no matter what you get, you're going to make your money. You're going to double your money, most likely, right off the bat. As soon as you load it up, you've doubled your money. You cannot lose. It's like playing blackjack and being dealt uh, blackjack, an ace and a ten, every hand. You cannot lose, right? <coughs> and then uh, most of the time, you're going to... Uh, I would say an average would be selling one of these for for six or seven hundred out of my hundred two hundred dollar investment. So I usually get get about four times my money. If I spend a hundred bucks on it, hundred and fifty bucks, I'd get six seven hundred dollars. That would be my average. Uh, and then once in a while you'll get the big hits, whether it's the Fusion or like that Maxima, uh, and that. You make a lot of money doing that. So you never lose. And that's the way you buy them. Now, 
I know I'm rambling too much. For you guys in the big cities, you are a uh, perfect position to buy cars. Now, I'm out here in the boonies, so I put an ad out that I buy any cars. If you're in the city, like I was lived in Dallas for years, I'd put an ad out that I want to buy, like this, Camaros and Firebirds. So that's what you guys can do. Specialize. Just put an ad. I'm looking for, you know, say you like this style here, 99 to 04 Mustang. Put an ad out. I'm looking to buy a wrecked, blown engine, abandoned, whatever, 99 to 04 Mustang. Call me. And you will get calls in a big city. You'll get call. You'll get five calls a day. Say if you're in Dallas, you get five people a day calling you saying, "I got one." Some people will want too much. Other people, uh, you know, it, it's just weird what it's worth because, or what people think it's worth. Somebody will say, "I oh, just take it away or give me a hundred bucks." Somebody will say, "Oh, I want a thousand dollars." And then you'll just have to weed them out and say, no, it's not, it's not worth it to me. <coughs> so you could, if you lived in a big city, you could pick up these cars every day. You could pick up five Mustangs like this every day if you lived in a big city by just running an ad. So you can do that with any car uh, if you want to specialize, no matter what it is. Like I said, Camaro Mustangs, uh, Jeeps, uh, trucks, uh sports cars anything but an ad that you want to buy them and that's and that you have absolutely no competition when you do that when somebody calls you up you're not it, it's the complete opposite of seeing a car for sale on marketplace like you'll see a car on marketplace or, or craigslist cheap you know somebody oh i got a you know, a 2004 Mustang, uh, it's running bad, uh, 500 bucks. You'll see an ad like that, but I can guarantee that thing's gone in 30 minutes. So by the time you call, it's gone. So you will not find deals, or very often, you will, you will, will not find deals like that by looking for cars for sale, okay? So, put that out of your mind you're not you're not going to find exceptional deals on cars for sale because if it's an exceptional deal it's already gone there's professionals out there that have alerts on their phone uh, that whenever something pops up that they're looking for and uh, they're they pay somebody or they go themselves I mean I got a friend of mine that specializes in a certain car and he had you know <laughs> He was sitting down for Christmas dinner, and they just had his plate loaded up. He had a knife in one hand, a fork in the other, just about to eat, and beep, beep, his phone goes off. Uh, a car that, he's, that he buys popped up on Craigslist, and it was such an exceptional deal that he dropped his knife and fork. He called him up, says, I'll be right there, even though it was two hours away. Hopped in his truck and trailer, and went off to Dallas to buy it. He stopped by my shop on the way back. It was a car that he paid 5000 for. He sold it the next day for fifteen. He made $10,000. So it was well worth $10,000 to drop his knife and fork and miss his Christmas dinner. <coughs> okay. So that's the type of guys you're dealing with if you think you can find a good deal. On marketplace or Greg's list or whatever because there's guys looking now unless you're specializing in junkers just old crappy cars that ain't worth a damn only to you well that might be a different story so anyway I know I rammed on long enough I just thought I'd, I'd let you all know about some of that uh, some advice about that buying cars that's the best way to do it just run an ad for what car you want to buy and I'll guarantee you'll, and even if you're not in a big city, if you're two hours away, your nearest big city, run an ad in that and be prepared to travel a couple hours away or whatever to get it. Okay, so uh, if you like the content, 
uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll be back. Uh, I'm restoring classics and hauling in clunkers and junkers. So uh, we'll have all kinds of uh, content, either fixing some of these cars up or tell, giving you advice about them. Okay, so we'll see you next video.